We are living through a revolutionary time. You are so much more powerful than you think you are. Hello, my sexy human beings on the internet, and welcome to this Libra Solar Eclipse video. Please do not skip the first part of this video. It is going to be so, so important if you consider yourself a spiritual being. The first part of this video is going to, I think, really, really help so many of you and land with so many of you and relate to so many of you. So please do not skip ahead to your sign because that's only going to be a very small part of this whole video, okay? So this video is so, so important. I may even make another video going deeper into some of the things that I talk about in here because I have been having a huge awakening lately. I don't know about you, but all of the stuff going on in the world right now is so intertwined astrologically and so intertwined energetically. And I think it is bringing a lot of people to this point of waking up. There's been a lot going on that I wanna talk about. I've just been processing it all and channeling it all and it's a lot. So uh, bear with me. I have so many channeled notes here that I wanna talk about. And I'm also gonna talk about the chart and everything that's going on right now in the world and how it's all relating as much as I can. By the way, hi, if you're new here, my name is Tawny Michelle. I am a spiritual hippie alien <laughs> on the internet that loves astrology and all things spiritual, all things self-development and healing related. So if you are into that kind of stuff, then welcome love to have you. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, all that jazz. Comment down below. Let me know where you're at, how you're feeling. Are you going through a crazy awakening lately? I'd love to hear it. I feel like the planet is awakening so hardcore right now and we're really being pushed inwards. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this Libra solar eclipse. So first and foremost, as I always start off, because astrology happens in layers, I always like to explain first what the fuck is a solar eclipse. So we can all be on the same page. We know what we're talking about. And a solar eclipse is essentially when the sun and the moon align in the sky and they are at a certain point that they are in alignment with what we call in astrology, the south node. Okay. Now this is important because it is basically a new moon, the sun and the moon align, which creates new beginnings. But it's on the south node, which has a lot to do with the past. It has a lot to do with karmic cycles. It has a lot to do with the karma that we carry in this life. It has a lot to do with the decisions and choices that we've made up until this point that have gotten us where we are and the pros and cons of each of those decisions and choices, right? And that is so, so much what this particular solar eclipse is about, right? Because Libra as a sign, which we'll get into here in a minute, is so much about decisions. It is so much about weighing the scales. How are we weighing things in our lives? What are we weighing them against? right? What game are we playing in terms of, you know, the good, bad, right, wrong, good versus evil, this side versus that side, me versus you, et cetera, et cetera, right? And that's a lot what Libra has to deal with. It deals with trying to find the middle ground of both sides, two opposite sides. This particular solar eclipse, this new moon solar eclipse is happening on the south node the node of karma, the node of our past, the node of, you know, even past lives and what we really bring into this life with us, the lessons that we're here to learn. So this is such a important event, a very karmic event, and we've likely been seeing some of the themes that are coming up since about October last year, where we had the last Libra solar eclipse. Now, two weeks ago, we had a Pisces full moon lunar eclipse right? So we're still also in this Piscean cycle where we're learning to let go. We're learning to transcend. We're learning to see the higher spiritual perspective on how everything is connected, right? Around how things are real that maybe we once thought were not real. We're learning to, to transcend the suffering and the pain and the, the darker, deeper emotions that keep us asleep and keep us stuck in our lives, right? That is really what Pisces is about. It's seeing how everything's connected and how you play a part in the whole that that particular full moon that we had was very close to Saturn. So it was also bringing up a lot of karma, a lot of consequential events, emotions, inner turmoil, and worldly chaos to show us that maybe things that we once thought were just an illusion or just a conspiracy theory or just like completely like out there that didn't make sense, right? Saturn is showing us that things are very real, right? There's so much coming out, you know, about all kinds of different things if you haven't been paying attention to what's going on in the world. 
right? Like other beings, other things, other, other belief systems, you know, like that maybe we thought like, oh, they may believe in that, but I don't believe in that. All these things are turning out to be real. It's almost like the devil underwater, right? I believe the devil is more symbolic of the hell that we go through when we are trapped and attached to our pain and our suffering, right? So anyway, but I, I feel like Saturn is bringing things up from all kinds of places. Um, and it's like darkness staring us in the face all over in the world right now. Things that we just thought like, there's no way this could be happening, whether it's the things going on with Hollywood or, you know, you know, people, you know, the, the government finally like admitting that, you know, there's, there's potentially other beings and aliens and like whatever, right? Like there's all of these things that are happening and Saturn is really showing us that it's all connected in some way, shape or form. And so we're dealing with a lot of these dark, heavy things and dark, heavy emotions that collectively we're all feeling in some way, right? And those feelings can keep us asleep, not the feeling in themselves, but the attachment to them, locking them or avoiding them or escaping them, right? Like that's what's kind of keeping us trapped and under this spell and in this weight of emotion, you know, in this, in this like weight of heaviness and darkness um, within our lives. I know for weeks, like before this awakening started happening for me, I was very in fear about what was going on. I was just feeling this collective fear and this collective panic and this collective hopelessness about what was happening in the world because of all these things that are coming out that are happening. Um, I live in the US, so it's a very intense political time over here. Um, you know, plus all the things coming out about, you know, Hollywood and celebrities and how deep and dark it gets and goes. It was like, holy shit, you know, like all these things that, you know, people have told me or I've heard different conspiracies about or whatever that I thought were like far-fetched or maybe there was some truth in them but not completely it's like it's real and that like really disturbed me for a minute like because you know if you're a millennial like me especially um Hollywood's had a huge impact it, it impacts oh, so much everything the things we watch the things we listen to you know like all of it and so I really was in this like really kind of almost like hopeless place for a little bit this like really hev heavy fear-based place and I I just broke down and I just felt all of the suffering and it felt like I was feeling it for all of humanity and I just started purging it because again we're all connected right so the more awake that you become the more that you can stare darkness in the face and not allow it to overcome you but decide to turn it into something beautiful right decide to do something with it transmute it transcend it see see it from a higher spiritual perspective right that is what pisces is all about and that's what we were what we're kind of coming out of but it's still prevalent right saturn is still in pisces and it's going to reveal a lot more you know i see a lot of people thinking it's like pluto and aquarius bringing a lot of this stuff up not to say that pluto and aquarius won't but pluto's not in aquarius right now it's in capricorn right and so it's still kind of dissecting and um, you know, reshaping and, and destroying a lot of false concepts around uh, the elite, the government, etc. being in Capricorn. But Saturn in Pisces is really pushing us to turn within. When things get scary on the outside, right? Pisces is the sign that awakens from within, right? And so all of these things that don't make sense, all of these things that seem crazy or far-fetched or like fairy tales or like, like you know, just uh, like, you know, absolutely insane, that are coming to light or if you're feeling this sense of fear and hopelessness and and you know kind of stuck in this victim mentality because you forgot that you are the creator right that you are the creator you are the being of light a being of light like of freaking course you know like i had this channeling the other day it was like tawny like of course you are feeling pain and and worry and fear you know, for humanity right now and for the collective right now, so many people are, right? And that shows me that we are normal freaking people, right? Like we are souls in this human experience. Of course, this is going to have an effect on us. Of course, we're going to be feeling this way. Of course, it's going to be sad. Of course, it's going to be humbling, right? And so, you know, I, I really wanted to, to say that because like we create it all from a higher perspective like we are creating it right because we are all god in some way we are all 
a, a piece of the universe, a piece of the divine. And when we can remember that and go within and like and cut off all the distractions that are really meant to pull us out of our power and to pull us out of, you know, our sovereignty that are really all a trance, all of these things happening, you know, are all different games established to pull us out, to really pull us out of our own selves, right? And so anyway, <laughs> that is, you know, what we're, what we're kind of dealing with still with that Pisces, you know, lunar um, eclipse that we're coming out of. We're really seeing like what, like Saturn and Pisces is really showing us that the true hell is these different emotions that we are not feeling, that we're not processing, that we're not allowing ourselves to feel, right? Because through feeling them, through purging them, through letting them out, that is how we awaken, right? And so when we are feeling all of this internal baggage, things that we feel guilt over, things that we feel shame over, things that we've been keeping in, all of that is making us sick and making us more susceptible to the delusion and the, the you know, falseness that is really covering our world right now. It's everywhere. There's just so much. And when you're not tapped into your center, to your truth, you're going to believe those things. You're going to be kind of under this spell. Like I said, you're not going to see what is the truth and what isn't. That is what where this Libra, you know, solar eclipse is really coming in. Because this is really about, like I said, our karma, the scales, showing us where we have been unfairly judging ourselves or fairly judging others or, you know, unfairly you know, making decisions in our lives that are not actually good for us, that have been out of a place of falseness, that haven't been from a place of truth. It's easy to focus on the bad and the things that you're just straight powerless over, right? It's easy to kind of spiral in that and feel like you're just powerless and it's hopeless and it's, you know, whatever. But the way out of that is through faith, through getting in touch with your internal being, your your divinity, right? and having a purpose right having a purpose remembering while why you're here like you would not be here if you didn't choose to be here during this time we are all here during this time and if you are already into spirituality if you've already had many awakenings you know this is the, the that's why like you're here to help other people in some way through the process you're here to help the planet awaken even just be an example or a beacon of light by how you do it right so we need to like forgive ourselves. We need to forgive our past. We need to forgive things. We need to let go of all the karmic bullshit that we've been holding on to that is keeping us trapped in a, you know, in basically hell, right? That is making our lives hell, right? This is like a, a purge that needs to happen. Where have you been not telling the truth in your life? Where have you been not embodying your truth in your life? Where you know, have you been too hard on yourself? That's what this time is really, really about. Like we are living through a revolutionary time, okay? A revolutionary time. If you think about all the events that have been happening in the last several years, like, <laughs> you know, like there, a lot of them are first in some way, shape or form, right? Like it is, we are living through a revolutionary time and this is a time of awakening and the, the, the scales are rebalancing right? And we get to decide where this goes when we are in our power, when we are awake to who we really are, to our true internal being. Because here's the thing, like when we are truly connected to the universe, to God, to whatever you believe in, when you truly feel that presence with you, you trust way more. And that is the antidote for all of this, right? And we trust through our feminine energy and Pisces is a feminine sign, right? So we're learning how to kind of integrate our feminine and awaken within through that energy. So we have like, you know, a lot of different camps of people coming out of this Pisces lunar eclipse, like people that want to avoid and escape, you know, the, the darker things happening in the world right now. And then we have people that are so you know, um, so focused on it that they're like losing themselves because they don't know what to do with all of this heaviness, all of the, all of the dark things that they're seeing, right? It's like, there's so much darkness in the world right now, just staring us straight in the face. There's a lot of truth coming out. That's really hard to accept, right? And so, like I said, when we are in touch with our feminine, our feminine knows how to alchemize. It knows how to take these things and turn them into something beautiful, right? And so what is your 
part in that? How can you do that? How can you take all of this and use it to awaken even more? Use it to, because when you know that you're the creator, when you are awake and you feel the divine with you, right? Like I said, you trust so much more, right? You trust so much more. You know how to move through these things and you know what your part is in all of it. You know how to move through it. You know how to deal with it. And you see the bigger perspective, right? And you can be grounded in your own center and in your own truth, in your own core, in your own soul. So this Libra solar eclipse, like I said, Libra as a sign is the scales. It deals with balance. It deals with justice. It deals with fairness. It deals with seeing the other and being able to almost sacrifice your own will and your own desires and what you want all the time for others, right? So it's balanced, right? So there's a balance to it, right? Like we don't want to sacrifice too much of ourselves to where we don't know who we are anymore and lose ourselves. But we also see the power in collaboration, especially in terms of relationships and making decisions, right? Libra is big about making the decisions. It weighs out things, right? I'm a Libra. <laughs> it's my tattoo. Um, and my other one, right? I'm a Libra son. So, you know, I, I fully really understand Libra, right? We weigh out decisions because we see the pros and cons in each decision. And we're very, very aware of them, right? And it's just crazy. Like, you know, we can see uh, the beauty in it all because Libra is ruled by Venus. So we see this dance of opposites, of polarity. We see the opposition and we can see ourselves in the opposition, right? You know, I, I had a message that came through because there's just so much conflict and opposition in the world right now. Um, and I thought this was a very, very uh, great, great frame of thought to kind of help hire your, hire your way of thinking. If you are very stuck in the conflict right now, whether in your personal life or whether within the world, right? If you were like, you know, if you're stuck between this side or that side or um, this person or that person or you versus someone else or um, this side versus this side, whatever it is, any kind of opposition where there's two different sides, right? If you knew that the other side was acting in God's will, would you feel how you do now? And that's just something to ponder, <laughs> you know, and I know that can be very, um, very controversial. I get it. And I'm not saying that it for sure is people do act from different places from darkness and light. But at the end of the day, everything is a dance of opposites. There's duality everywhere. There's going to always be light and dark. There's, go there's going to be bad things that come from good things. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing and too much of a bad thing can be a good thing, right? Like we come back to the law of duality with Libra, right? We see that everything has uh, pros and cons with it, right? Everything has consequences. Every decision has consequences. A really great can, can, decision can have negative consequences. You're never going to get out of that because it's a law of the universe, just like there's day and night, right? Like these are the laws that drive the universe, right? So, and when we're not careful, when we take, when we are too divisive, when we're too caught in division, which is really the ego's game, because it's all out of fear. It all comes from fear and a way to protect ourselves. When we are caught in division, we end up becoming what we hate. We do in some way or another, right? And so I always say, make sure in your fight against something that you don't become the very thing that you're fighting against because it happens so much. And I see it with everything that's going on right now. <laughs> you know, I see it with, with all kinds of things, right? Um, two different sides saying the same things about each other, you know, and it's just like, if we if we don't rise above this then we stay caught in it and we are under this illusion and we're giving our power away and it's draining right like sure you can have certain things that you prefer to happen right but when if you're in fear and you're in divisiveness and you're in hatred and you're in conflict of it all these end up keeping us turned away 
from ourselves, turned away from our own inner sovereignty, from our divinity within. Libra teaches us that you are who you dislike. You give your power to what you hate. There is a reason why we hate things or dislike things or have a very, you know, uh, negative reaction to certain things because they represent a part that we don't want to accept within ourselves to in some degree, right? It may not be the very action that they do or something like that. It may not be literally, but in some degree, they represent something in us where we still need to heal, where we're still attachment to, where we're still attached to an idea about a certain ego or character that we're playing. So this Libra solar eclipse is really coming in to ask us, can we let go of the things that are keeping us stuck in old karmic cycles, making the same karmic decisions? Can we let go of hatred? Can we let go of conflict? And that starts with letting go of inner conflict. What pain are we holding on to? And is it worth, is it worth it to hold on to it? What darkness inside of us are we holding on to that's keeping us stuck and keeping us continually, you know, continuously carrying out the same old cycles? We ascend by letting these things go and realizing the game. And realizing that we're the ones creating the game. Because you are so much more powerful than you think you are. And this is why Libra weighs things out. There's dark and light in everything. There's dark and light in every choice, every person, everything. It's not completely black and white. So we have to find a way to face the darkness and then create something beautiful from it. That is what this is all about. Where have we been judging ourselves unfairly? Where have we been judging others unfairly? People that, you know, relationships in our lives, etc. You know, I had the major realization the other day that I've been judging myself very, very unfairly. And I've been judging the sign of Libra unfairly because for a long time, I kind of, the, the traits, I, I like couldn't stand certain traits about being a Libra. Like I couldn't stand that I would give up so much of myself or what I wanted, or who I was for the sake of other people. Like I used to think it, like, I used to think of it as like a weakness. And I realized the other day that actually it's a strength. It's a badass strength, right? Because like here I am judging myself so unfairly thinking I'm weak because, you know, I, you know, don't always stand in my own sense of, of self uh, when it comes to other people or relationships, etc. But yet, Others around me are happy and thriving. Why Why have I not been? I've had no reason not to be, right? And it's not that I can't, you know, be myself and, and you know, all of that. You know, it's, it's all me doing it. I'm the one that made those choices and decisions. You know what I mean? And so I realized I've been super hard on myself and judging myself unfairly, you know, and judging the sign of Libra unfairly, you know, like, and, and realizing that like, hey, it's, not as bad as, you know, I've been judging, you know, and, and it's really like the, the human in us that judges and the ego in us that judges, right? But from a divine standpoint, like we are perfect just as we are. So feeling and, and noticing these different things within you doesn't keep you in a low vibration, right? It's holding on to it that does. So if there's some truth that you need to tell, if there's some decision you've been avoiding, if there's decisions you've been making that like, aren't in alignment with you and you know it, right? Like this is where you need to get it out. You need to just find a way to get it out of you, whether you have to cry it out, whether you have to talk it out, whether you have to, uh, you know, declare it, you know, whatever it is, like it's time to let go of the baggage that has been weighing us down, that has been weighing our scale down, right? That has created some kind of unjust or unfair circumstance or situation in our lives. And it's time to take responsibility and stop avoiding it. It's time to take responsibility for it as the creator in our lives. The astrology agrees with me. Okay. It agrees with me. Venus is the ruler of the solar eclipse and it is in Scorpio. Okay. Trining Saturn and trining Mars right? Showing us that there is a collective sense of suffering that is happening and we have got to transcend it. It is time to let it go. We are letting go of the baggage. We are seeing old belief systems crumble before our very eyes. We are seeing illusions crumble before our very eyes all over, right? And it is time to let it 
go. It is time to face the truth, accept the truth, right? And and not be scared to, to, to stare the darker things in the face and know that you are going to create something beautiful from it, right? And know that you are here for a reason, right? That you are here for a reason during this time or else you wouldn't be here. You chose to be on this earth during this time for some reason, right? What part do you want to play? How can you go inside of yourself and awaken? How can you see the balance and see the duality for what it is? So this solar eclipse is very much about that. Now the solar eclipse is squaring Mars and Cancer. So this is bringing up difficult and uncomfortable emotions, especially related to people that we have strong bonds with or strong connections with, family, relationships, etc. It can bring in some controversy and some difficult emotions, but we have to do what feels like the truth for us and what feels like the just, fair, right, and balanced decision for ourselves, right? And that is really, really what this solar eclipse in Libra is all about. What is good for us and what is good for us is good for others. Or where have we been, you know, uh, too selfish or too in our own drama um, where we've been unfair, unjust for others, where we've judged others unfairly, right? Or we've judged other sides or things that we thought we were against or whatever unfairly, right? So this is a time to get back to the essence because, to get back to your own spiritual essence because when we are asleep, and we are in these endless cycles of pain and suffering and hopelessness and, you know, holding on and attached to all of our old baggage and our, our shame and our guilt. And, you know, in these stories that we're telling ourselves, you know, about, you know, where we're judging ourselves and critiquing ourselves and all of that, that is when we can become the most, the, the most um, susceptible to delusion and illusion, right? And that is when it feels like we're in this kind of endless suffering, which can be very, very easy to, to, to feel like you're in, right? Because there is a lot of collective pain on the planet, but instead of seeing that and, and, you know, feeling like you can't be sad about it because you can be sad about it, be sad about it, you know, weep, you know, like let it out, right? And then see that this is actually an exciting time to be alive and that because of these things, so many people are awakening. And what part are we going to play in that? Yes, the world may look different. Yes, we may go through through some hurdles, some some more dark nights of the soul. Um, you know, humanity is kind of going through a dark night of the soul right now. Where can we balance it by being beacons of light? Right? So let me know down below if this resonated with you. I feel like this was all a very special message for some people out there that really needed to hear it and let me know if you were that person. Comment down below, badass alien, if you stayed and watched the whole first part of this video because you are my fellow badass alien fam and I appreciate you so much. I am still doing personal readings, so if you would like a personal reading to kind of go deeper into what's going on with you personally and you know how you know all of this is affecting you right now, then you can book a reading with me down below. Um, other than that, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. And we are going to go ahead and move on to the zodiac signs now. Alrighty, Libra rising, starting with you, darlings. Um, so this solar eclipse is a really big one for you. It's right in your first house. Um, I didn't mention it in the beginning of the video, but it's conjunct true Lilith. Um, so it goes with a lot of the themes I was already saying. It's also conjunct Mercury and the south node. So it's bringing you a big dose of wake the fuck up. <laughs> um, major epiphanies, major revelations, major new beginnings, while also bringing to a close a lot of karmic cycles and old karmic decisions that have been made in the past that may have still been weighing you down, right? Where have you been unfairly judging yourself, unjudging others? Where do you need to let things go? Where do you need to purge old habits? Where do you need to purge old values, old priorities, old things that have been maybe working against you, right? Where have you been too stuck in the past or too stuck in, um, you know, old 
cycles and all of that, right? So this solar eclipse is a huge, huge new beginning for you. And it can really be, you know, a time where it's also you know, squaring Mars in your, your 10th house of career and your long-term goals and, you know, all of that. And so this can also be a time where you are really under pressure to make some changes internally and with yourself and how you perceive yourself and how you look at yourself that are going to be more beneficial for you long-term, but may seem very hard and challenging right now. Um, you may see a lot of conflict in the world. You may be noticing a lot of conflict um, you know, professionally or even career-wise or just in the world at large in general. And, you know, um, a lot of your beliefs could be really changing and your outlook could be really changing. And so this is a time where you are really changing, right? This is a, a massive new beginning for your identity, what you identify as, um, and, you know, how you see yourself. You know, this could also be a really major change, big change coming in to do with your body, your appearance, your health in some way, right? And so um, you're really kind of making friends with certain darker parts of you or your past so you can create something beautiful with it and so it doesn't keep holding you down right? And so you're blending together opposites of your identity and your personality and integrating these things so you can feel more like yourself and more balanced within yourself and who you are as a person and how you go about your life, right? So that is what I'm seeing for you, Libra Risings. Let me know down below. If you didn't watch the beginning, you need to do that. <laughs> you need to do that right now. So please go back and watch the first part of this video. Um, I'm a Libra sun and it's all about Libra and um, the the time that we're in right now and how you can really use these these transits to the fullest, right? Um, also, I'm still doing personal readings. So if you would like to go deeper, you can um, book a reading down below. So moving on to Scorpio Risings. So for Scorpio Risings, this eclipse is happening in your 12th house. So this is really bringing up all of the hidden old karmic contracts from the past and trying to wipe the slate clean, trying to help you really purge what you've been holding in, what you've been attached to, what you've been holding on to, old habits, old addictions, old cycles, old patterns, old loops that you've been stuck in. It's a time of rebalancing in your subconscious, right? So this is a massive time where you're going to notice a lot of shifts happening in terms of your subconscious, in terms of healing, really, um, and standing in your truth, finding your truth. This may be a time where you really feel like you need to kind of isolate yourself, get away, and that would be a really good idea right about now, or something could happen that kind of makes you go away in some way, right? Like something comes up or maybe you even come up with like a, you know, like a, a, a cold or, a, you know, you, you get sick or something and you end up having to like, you know, be at home by yourself um, for a while. Or maybe you take like a solo vacation or something. But this time could really, really be a really beneficial time if you exclude yourself and find the balance within, find the truth within, right? Um, that is really what's going to help you because it's going to help you find the beauty within yourself with Venus, the ruler of this eclipse, being in your sign in your first house. Um, this is a time where you're like reprioritizing yourself and um, dealing with some subconscious things or some things from the past and kind of closing old doors so you can open new ones basically right that's what I'm really seeing for you so let me know if that's resonating for you Scorpio I'd really love to hear your feedback down below and if you didn't watch the first part of this video it goes way way deeper so make sure you kind of rewind and go back and watch the whole first half of this video because you're really missing out if you didn't so moving on to Sagittarius Risings for Sagittarius Risings, this solar eclipse is happening in your 11th house of friends, networking, different alliances and groups that you belong to or share interest with, right? So this could really be bringing up um, a lot of topics of things going on in the world, things going on with other people, things going on with your social life, your social environment, um, things going on, on online that you care about or things going on in the world that you care about, you know, with different groups and, and all of that. And so this is really kind of bringing that to the forefront so you can find balance here. So you can really kind of see where you've been potentially judging things unfairly, um, where you can kind of let go of the past, certain karmic cycles, maybe um, even some karmic friendships or some karmic groups that may not 
be fair for you anymore. There may not be an equal give and take there. Um, you may be seeing the other side of something, you know, like maybe you've been attached to seeing things one way or attached to a certain side and now you're kind of seeing the other side of it, you know, or that's what this eclipse could be trying to show you at least. You know, it's also bringing out your own kind of shadows, your own kind of habits, addictions, cycles, things that you need to purge or let go of with Venus, um, you know, in your 12th house. Um, it could be kind of also showing you certain people in your life that maybe you're seeing their true colors or maybe you're you're seeing who's aligned with you and who's not kind of thing, right? Um, it's, it's really bringing out a lot of that. And for some of you, this could also have to do with... Um, you know, finances in some way or, <clears throat> you know, certain agreements or contracts or conflicts going on financially um, as well with this eclipse squaring Mars in your eighth house. So let me know down below Saturn or Sagittarius. I almost said Saturn. Um, I was looking right at Saturn, but um, if that's resonating with you and if you missed the first half of this video, you are really freaking missing out. So go watch the first half of this video. Okay. Okay, moving on to Capricorn Risings. For Capricorn Risings, this solar eclipse in Libra is happening in your 10th house of your long-term goals, your career, um, you know, the world and what you see in the world, what's going on in the world, where you're headed in life, all of that, right? So this eclipse is really a new beginning <clears throat> that is planting seeds for you to be more aligned with your truth, more aligned with your career, more aligned with your goals, but to also let go of the karmic baggage that has been holding you back from that. Now, this may not be like a one and done thing. Like you may not notice these themes right away at this eclipse. Um, it's going to be building for the next few months, but it's going to be more noticeable the next few weeks, especially. But this is definitely a time where you are closing certain chapters and certain doors and opening new ones where you are seeing the other side of something in terms of your career, your long term goals, or even things going on in the world for some of you, right? Um, it's really about seeing the people that are also aligned with you and the relationships that are also aligned with you and aligned with where you're going in your future. That's really big right now because, um, you know, this is very much about relationships. If you're a Capricorn rising with Venus being in your 11th in Scorpio, um, where she's not so comfortable. So you could be kind of seeing, um, you know, the darker side to some connections in your life or um, something there that's going on, maybe secretly or behind the scenes. Or, um, you know, with a solar eclipse squaring Mars in your seventh, this could also be bringing up some kind of heated emotions in terms of your relationships, like your close relationships in your life or one of your relationships in your life as well, right? And so um, there's definitely kind of a rebalancing happening here in terms of friends, acquaintances, and your career and your relationships, right? And getting more aligned with what you want um, and what others want, what's fair, um, what feels equal, what feels um, harmonious in this area, and what's been keeping things unbalanced in this area and really addressing them and facing them and no longer avoiding them, okay? So that is what I'm seeing for you if you're a Capricorn rising. Let me know down below if that related to you. And if you didn't watch the first part of this video, go freaking watch it because <laughs> you missed out on a lot and you're not going to want to miss that, okay? So Moving on to Aquarius Risings, if you are an Aquarius Rising, this solar eclipse in Libra is happening in your ninth house of foreign travel, education, kind of finding your beliefs and purpose and meaning in the world. Um, the ninth house can also rule politics and kind of uh, higher forms of thinking. And so this could definitely be a time that is really shedding some light on some truths. Um, in terms of what you believe and your outlook on the world and your outlook on, <clears throat> you know, people, politics, you know, like all of these different beliefs that you have, politics is in there because really the ninth house just rules like your like belief systems, your bigger belief systems, right? And your outlook on the world. And so these things could all be somehow combined or maybe just one of them is, but this is definitely a time where you are releasing some karmic debts or some karmic cycles or some karmic baggage here that may be very emotional um, and where you are kind of realizing a lot and waking up to a lot on like a higher level, right? Um, in some way, shape or form. And also looking at how this somehow is going to influence or impact your career, your long-term goals, your place in the world, where what you want for your future, 
right? And, um, you know, how it could be also like impacting your, your day-to-day life, your health, your job, um, is, you know, have you been in some confrontation or emotional turmoil or, you know, emotional heatedness, um, about these things and where have you been too attached to certain outcomes or certain things and that's been holding you back in some way, right? So let me know down below Aquarius if that's resonating and what you are seeing come up for this uh, solar eclipse. I would love to hear your feedback down below and if you missed the beginning of this video, you need to watch it, okay? It's big, it's powerful, um, you don't want to miss it so go back and watch it. <laughs> Okay, so Pisces rising, for Pisces risings, this solar eclipse is happening in your eighth house. And so this is definitely a time where you are kind of rebalancing your financial life and what that has to do with other people. You are kind of seeing what has been fair, what hasn't been fair, what has felt unjust, where have you given up too much of maybe, um, you know, your own desires or um, your own sense of self within your finances or where have, you know, you not done that? Where have you been maybe more concerned with yourself and not concerned with others in terms of finances? It could go either way, right? But it's like, where have you had certain attachments to things or where are certain karmic cycles, karmic contracts kind of coming into... Alrighty, Pisces, my camera died, so sorry about that. Not sure where I left off, but... Yeah, basically, this is about your relationship with your finances and your relationship with other people, right? And a lot of karmic ties, baggage that could be coming up around those topics and those themes for this solar eclipse, right? And so this is definitely a time where you may be making some changes or where you may be clearing some old things and taking responsibility for some old things so you can open new doors for yourself financially, right? Or, uh, you know, change some things with your connections financially. So that is what I'm seeing for you if you're a Pisces rising. Let's go ahead and move on to Aries. So for Aries risings, this solar eclipse is happening in your seventh house. And uh, yeah, this is a big deal <laughs> for you because this is your opposite sign. So a lot of opposites happening here in your life, right? You could really feel like there's a, a large focus on your relationships with other people and any karmic things going on with that, karmic contracts, karmic uh, decisions and things from the past that are really coming up at this time um, into your awareness. You can almost like clear your debt, clear where things have been unfair or unfair just or where things haven't felt balanced or where it hasn't felt like there's an equilibrium or um, where it hasn't felt harmonious in terms of your relationships. And so this is a huge kind of cycle clearing, a new cycle beginning for you in that department if you're an Aries rising. Now, this could also be bringing up some intense, heated conflicts or emotions uh, in terms of your home and family life as well with it swearing Mars in your fourth house of home and family in your personal life and what's kind of personal to you and all of that, right? So that could definitely be something coming up at this time. Um, your part, your significant other's finances could be involved or maybe your finances could be involved with a significant other or other people in some way. Like finances could be coming up as well in the theme of what you're dealing with with others um, just because Venus is in your eighth house. Um, and Venus rules this solar eclipse. So there's a lot of things that you're kind of either ending um, or trying to change and make right in terms of these areas of your life if you're an Aries rising. So let me know down below, Aries, if that is relating to you. So if you're a Taurus rising, the solar eclipse is happening in your sixth house of your day-to-day uh, -day routines, your work, your habits, your day-to-day -day job and the day-to-day -day task that you kind of go through on a day-to-day -day basis, the day-to-day -day stuff basically, right? So this is definitely a time where if things have if things have felt kind of unbalanced or unfair or unjust, if there's been too much giving and not enough taking or too much taking and not enough giving, that is really coming up right now um, in terms of your work life, your habits, um, you know, your routines, etc. So it's like, where can you get rebalanced in this area? Where can you kind of rebalance the scales? Um, and how is this tying into your relationships, right, with other people, as well with Venus being in your seventh, right? Um, what old attachments, old habits, or old, you know, um, negative patterns have you been holding on to that really need to be purged or dealt with and that are really affecting and influencing your relationships, your environment, and your day-to-day -day life in some way and how you really see things um, in some way, right? Have you been kind of holding in a truth? Have you been feeling unaligned with something? 
something, but you've been kind of just going along with it. Have you been avoiding something or evading something that finally needs to be addressed, right, um, in these areas of your life? So that's what is really coming up if you're a Taurus rising. And if you did not watch the beginning, definitely make sure you go back and watch that because you are missing out big time. Um, there's definitely messages for you in there. So go back and watch the first half. So moving on to Gemini rising. So if you're a Gemini rising, this solar eclipse is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, and children. So this could definitely be a time where relationships and love and romance are really kind of a focus for one reason or another. Um, it could be that you're having a lot of realizations. There's a lot of um, communication that needs to happen. Um, there's a decision maybe that you're making here, or there's a, a like, you know, reevaluation that you're kind of making on your habits in terms of your love life and in terms of your romantic life and your dating life. Um, are you kind of attracting the same kind of person over and over again? And why is that? And how does that lead back to you, right? It's not about fault or blame, it's about seeing where maybe some of your own unconscious things are playing a part in it, right? Now, if you're already in a relationship, this could just be a time where you are trying to rebalance that relationship by finding the fun and romance in it again, right? Figuring out what you love, what your real feelings are, what your real passion is in this relationship, or just in life in general, right? This could just be like your passions in general in your life um, that are kind of coming up around this time. Um, it could also be bringing a theme of children in as well. If you have children um, where you are, you know, kind of looking at you know, how to find an equilibrium with your children, if there's been something kind of out of balance there. So yeah, it could also be bringing up some emotional conflict in terms of your finances, your needs, your resources, um, the things that you own and have in some way as it's squaring Mars in your second. And so you may be trying to make some difficult decisions, um, you know, about what is best for your own interest um, or for, you know, your, um, you know, love life. But somehow there's, you know, a conflict financially or a conflict with resources or something along those lines. Um, and this could also be bringing in your job, your health, your habits, and your day-to-day -day routines as well with Venus being in your sixth house and ruling this eclipse. So that is what I'm seeing for you if you're a Gemini rising. If you missed the first half of this video, you are missing out. So you definitely need to go watch that. Um, you will thank me later. <laughs> so moving on to Cancer Risings. So if you are a Cancer Rising, this solar eclipse is happening in your fourth house of home and family in your personal life, the things that go on in your private life, right? Kind of behind closed doors, like what happens at home, what happens with family, um, what happens when you're, you know, not out in public and out and out and about all of that. So this could really be bringing up some deep ancestral karma, contracts, baggage, old things, old conflicts that need to be settled, that need to be squared away, um, you know, old resentments that maybe even you've held, um, you know, um, from the past, you know, um, this could be bringing up a lot of um, dysfunction or divisiveness within your family for you to kind of find a middle ground and equilibrium, um, the harmony again, right? Um, for you to figure out what's fair and what's what feels just right? Um, for you and for maybe everybody else, right? And so that is what's really happening here, but it could be bringing up some deep ancestral stuff, some deep stuff in, um, with your parents, like clearing kind of karmic slates from the past, um, clearing karmic slate from, slates from like your roots, your bloodline, you know, things like that could really be coming up strong here. Um, and it's, you know, kind of about finding that middle ground and figuring out where you've been judging things unfairly. Um, or where you felt judged unfairly by maybe your family or something going on in your home life, um, you know, something to do with that. So I definitely see a focus on home, family, children, um, you know, ancestors, parents, uh, things like that happening. And with the squaring Mars in your first house, this could definitely be challenging you. You know, it could be a challenge for you to, you know, kind of deal with these things that are coming up um, because they, they bring up a lot of emotion or tension, you know, or stress. And so that is what I'm seeing for you. But this is, this is all for you to kind of come together, find the middle ground, find the equilibrium and let go of anything that doesn't feel true. Like what's the truth? If you can find the truth in the situation, that is where you will thrive and shine with this eclipse. So let me know down below, Cancer, uh, what you're noticing and how that 
um, you know, how, if, if anything I just said is really landing for you and how and why, I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you didn't watch the first half of the video, you are missing out. You definitely need to go watch that. Okay. So moving on to my fellow Leo risings, what is up fam? Um, welcome. <laughs> um, so this, uh, solar eclipse for us as a Leo rising, um, is in our third house, which, um, our third house is not like a super big, um, pivotal spot in our chart, right? Unless you have like other planets there that it's hitting. Um, other than that, you know, the third house deals with a lot of random things, um, speaking up for ourselves, um, our perception, our environment, our local, you know, local surroundings, what we're doing, um, in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, we could find ourselves kind of seeing our local environment in a new way, visiting some new places, things like that. This could also be a great time for like writing or poetry or doing something creative or working on a creative project that somehow gets our voice out there, right? Because the third house can really relate to speaking up in conversations and, you know, putting our voice out there and all of that. Um, we may also really be kind of figuring out how to balance our reality in our day-to-day -day lives and what has felt out of whack within our day-to-day -day lives and our environments um, that we need to kind of rebalance, right? What has felt unjust or unfair um, or just out simply out of balance, you know? Um, you know, there could be some friends or people in our lives as well that maybe um, are coming up around this time or that are significant around this eclipse. Now, this is also bringing up karmic cycles and patterns for us um, in this area with really coming back down to earth and coming back down to our own individual viewpoints instead of um, kind of being lost in what's going on at a higher level. So the duality of the, the third and ninth house is really like the ninth house is these like big belief systems where we look outside of ourselves and into the world and, you know, um, big belief systems that have like a following, etc. Whereas the third house is more of like our own personal belief systems and how they affect our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and so what I've really noticed with this is like, you know, sometimes we can get caught in all the conflict and the divisiveness and the anger and the aggression of what's going on in the world. And so right now we may find more peace, more harmony, um, and more balance in focusing on what's right in front of us rather than these big ideals, right? Or these big, um, conflicts or, you know, whatever, right? These big things going on, um, outside of us that maybe we're somewhat powerless over, right? And so we're also kind of sweeping away old trains of thought, old belief systems, old things, old perceptions, old perspectives, um, you know, that no longer align with where we want to go or that just aren't healthy for us anymore, you know? And with this wearing Mars in our 12th house, this could be kind of um, a time where we are restless or um, where maybe we're, um, you know, the solar eclipse, it could feel like maybe we're struggling to sleep a little bit more. There's something going on with our, our, our sleep in some way. I know that I just found out I have sleep apnea. <laughs> so <laughs> pretty much on point there, um, you know, because I wake up like so many times throughout the night for like the last few years. But um, so yeah, but Mars in our 12th house is also a time to get really back into our spirituality to kind of cut off any distractions and outer noise and change our day-to-day -day habits um, and routines that aren't working for us or that are keeping us away from our own truth, our own balance in our lives, right? And so this could be a really great time to find, to go within, to maybe even seclude yourself a little bit. Um, you know, I've been also finding that I just want to kind of like, you know, go out in nature and just like get lost for a little while. <laughs> like I've been having that like urge and I feel like that's definitely like Mars in the 12th, like, you know, just get out, get away, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's like we are having to find a way to really deal with certain emotional conflicts going on within our lives or intense emotions that may be coming up, you know, with Mars in our 12th, trining Saturn um, and Pisces, we could be very receptive to a lot of other people's energy and a lot of other people's emotion right now, right? And so we have to really, really kind of pay attention to that and take breaks and, you know, know when the balance is off, when this, when our scales are off, right? So we can kind of get back into balance. This could also bring up a lot of realizations, a lot of epiphanies, um, maybe even some communication from past people could come in for this solar eclipse if you're a Leo rising. So um, 
yeah, let me know below, Leo, how that is relating. I would really love to hear your feedback. And if you missed the whole first part of this video, go back and watch it because you are definitely going to relate to it in some way, shape, or form because I'm a Leo rising and it's all coming from my perspective. So yeah, it's a very powerful first half of the video that you don't want to miss. Okay, so thank me later. <laughs> okay, so Virgo risings. Um, so for Vo Virgo risings, this solar eclipse is happening in your second house of finances, your needs, your priorities, your resources, what you have. Okay, and this is a time where, you know, the last year or so you've been really kind of addressing karma in this area, right? Rebalancing um, your area of finances, your area of resources, your areas of what you own, what you have, what you need, right? Um, and that doesn't just have to be money or even physical things, right? Um, you've been really seeing where there has been certain karmic ties or karmic patterns in how much you give and take and the, you know, potentially unfairness of that, right? Like maybe you give too much and take too little or vice versa, right? And so this is really, really coming up for you around this time um, for you to kind of reevaluate. You know, this could be really changing your outlook, changing your perception on this, <clears throat> these areas of your life and these themes of your life. You know, um, this could definitely be a time where you are kind of readdressing your priorities and coming back into balance with what really matters to you and your own personal truth um, rather than you know, being kind of swept up or distracted by other things, right? And so this is definitely a time where you are noticing potentially karmic things, cycles, whatever, doors closing and new ones opening in terms of, you know, your resources and what you need, what you have, what you own, um, and how that backs you up or makes you feel secure in your life in some way, right? So um, that is what I'm seeing for you if you're a Virgo rising. Let me know down below if that is resonating. And thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I appreciate you and I will see you guys in the next one.